Good evening, New Church of Faith. Happy Thanksgiving Eve to everyone. I know you are preparing your food, but I challenge you for the next one hour. Put the food down, put the utensils down, gather your family together, and let's praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. He is good. And we owe him all the praise. And we're going to give it to him tonight. We're not going to hold you for a long time, but we're going to praise the Lord real good. And we're going to get started like we always do with God's obligation. And it starts when my heart is right towards God. He is obligated to orchestrate the situations and circumstances and events in my life to bring me into the knowledge of the things I need to know and the people I need to know that are critical to fulfillment of my purpose and destiny in life. In your living room, jump up and say amen. Come on and say amen as we get ready for Bible study. Come on, we came to lift up the name of the Lord. Come on, I'm right here with the voices of praise. Listen, if you're in your home, I dare you to worship with us. I dare you to lift up the name of the Lord. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, we're going to sing some songs tonight. We're going to teach a lesson tonight. Well, we're just going to give God our absolute best. Come on, give him a good wave offer. Give him a good wave offer. Come on. Come on, with thankful hearts, we sing this simple song tonight. This is Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Up your voice and sing now. Hallelujah. You have won. You have won the victory. Lift up your voice and sing. Oh. oh. Goes beyond my 
Everybody shout it. Yeah. 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 So good. So good to me. Yeah. 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 Lift your voice and shout it. Yeah. 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 So, good. so good to me. Yeah. 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 Come on, everybody yeah. say it together. Come on. My God.
him. Lift him up. How great is our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on now, if you at home, I need you to jump up off the couch right now. Let's go in and get ready to bless the Lord as great as we can. Come on and praise Him. Let's go. One, two, one, two. See you.
Shock him till you lift him up To your praise Shock him till you lift him up Your praise, your praise, your praise Shock him till you lift him up
Thank God for great praise. Hallelujah. Come on, I dare you to give Hallelujah. God some praise right there. Right there, a great, Hallelujah. mighty, amazing, awesome, you, holy God that we serve. How great is our God. He's so awesome. He allowed us to gather together over the internet, over the airways, whatever way you're watching us. Remember, we serve the true and living, awesome, and holy, great God. Hallelujah. Come on, wherever you are, go ahead and give him a wave off right now. All the breath belongs to the Lord. Go ahead and give it back to him in praise.
said, I know I was truly blessed because God will never fail us. He will never leave us. And during this Thanksgiving season, we have so much to be grateful for and so much to be thankful for. All month long, we've been in an In Everything series, giving God thanks in everything. So I want you to grab your Bibles, grab your notepads, grab your tablets, and get ready to receive a word from our Bishop Russ and Pastor Mika Beecham. Good evening, everyone. We are so excited to be in your homes this Wednesday before Thanksgiving, celebrating all God has done. I know you truly were blessed by the amazing praise and worship that just took place. And now we're going to dive into our word. So let's open with a word of prayer. Come on, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time of fellowship around your word. Lord, we thank you that each and every time we assemble together, we're in person or at home, 
there is no distance in prayer. You meet us, and for this we're thankful. Lord, we ask you to give us a word of encouragement, a word of hope, a word of thanksgiving today. Lord, we ask you to allow your anointing to flow freely this evening, unhindered and unchecked by any outside influence. But help us to accomplish the task of destroying yokes, breaking chains, and equipping us to be everything you've called us to be. God, we thank you in advance for what you're about to do, for you always confirm your word with signs following. And I decree and declare that signs, wonders, and miracles will follow the taught word of God on tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Pastor Mickey, you know we've been in this series entitled In Everything. Yes. And um, this is literally our, our final lesson in this series. And it's amazing that technology allows us to even teach it while they're cooking their Thanksgiving dinner. I love it. The night before Thanksgiving, we're able to conclude the series In Everything, Give Thanks. So let's jump in. Let's, let's just read our, our, our main scriptures, and then we'll jump right in. Is that okay? Okay. 1 Corinthians 5 and 18. Um, we're going to read out of King James first, Version first. This is what the Bible says. What does it say? Here we go. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Pastor Mika, if you don't have revelation or understanding, you'll think everything that you're going through is the will of God concerning you. Right. But the passage isn't reading um, that what you find yourself in is something to be thankful for. The passage is encouraging us to live a lifestyle of thanksgiving. It's a little clear if we read it out of the Amplified Bible. Go on, read out of the Amplified. The Amplified Bible reads like this. In every situation, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continually give thanks to God. I love that part. Continually give thanks to God. That means consistently over and over again be in a posture of thanksgiving. Making it a lifestyle. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Okay, here's my favorite version. It comes out of the Living Bible. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, out of the Living Bible. Come on. It doesn't get any plainer than this. No matter what happens. Read that one more time. No matter what happens. Let's read that together. Is that okay? Yes. No, no matter, matter what, what happens, happens. Always be thankful. For this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. So it is God's will that we remain in a heart's posture of thanksgiving and praise. Mm -hmm. Listen, um, God always hears when we pray, but he shows up when we thank and praise him. So let's find out what this last lesson will be about, and we'll, we'll get you back to your cooking. Joshua 24 and 15, very familiar passage of Scripture out of the New American Standard Bible. If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve whether the gods which your father served, which were beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I know you're in your house right now, but I dare you to tell everybody in your house, my whole team is thankful. Yeah. No, my wait, whole no, no, I said team. tell everybody. You just told one person, <laughs> tell everybody in your house, my whole team is thankful. Um, it's funny, Pastor Mika. Pastor Mika just read that scripture. That was Joshua talking, mm -hmm. and he was literally talking to the people around him, the people in his family, the people who are associated with him. He said, I don't know what you guys are going to do. Right. He says, um, you, can, you can serve whatever gods you want, the, um, the gods that were beyond the river, the gods in the land, or the people that you live. But as for me and my mm -hmm. family, mm -hmm. we've decided in advance that we're going to serve the Lord. Yes. And that's a bold declaration to make. And if we'll be honest, sometimes it makes us a little nervous to make that declaration because everyone in our house may not be in relationship with God like we'd like them to be. But I encourage you to declare a thing so that it may be established. Make the decision that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This past Sunday, we had an amazing Sunday. It's always the Sunday of the Central Florida Classic, where, yeah. um, where the Florida Classic, where uh, Bethune-Cookman University and Florida A&M University, they clash. It's mm -hmm. like one big family reunion. And, um, and so we always dress up in whatever our favorite team is. And whether your team won or lost, you can still be thankful. Most definitely. And, and the funny thing is, um, we were talking about it Sunday. We all know people who are mega fans. Right. We had people who were wearing all kind of different jerseys, all kind of different teams, teams that were good, teams that were bad, teams that were somewhere in between, but they really, really loved their team. Yes. We know people like that, don't we? Definitely. We have diehard fans that have rooms in their homes dedicated to their favorite team. Shout out to Upper Barboro, Maryland. Um, and then you have some. That are bandwagon. That are what we consider bandwagon fans. They have one team every year that's different. That's because they only go for the team that's winning. Right. If, if their so-called team isn't winning, they'll switch teams. Right. 
But the truth of the matter is, Joshua was, was saying this to his family, no, go ahead and pick a side already. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and pick a team already. But as for me and my team, mm -hmm. we're going to serve the Lord. My whole team is thankful. So let's find out what happens, um, why our team is thankful tonight. Psalm 100, let's start at verse 4, Pastor Mika. Let's jump in. Come on. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness to all generations. That is so encouraging because that means if he's faithful to all generations, he's faithful to my generation. Thank you, Lord. And thank the Lord. The reason my whole team is thankful, number one, they're going to put it on the screen for you. My whole team has a relationship with the owner. Mm -hmm. Let me say it again. My whole team has a relationship with the owner. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's yes, and is. the fullness thereof and everyone who inhabits it. The coolest thing is, Pastor Mika, all the pressure is off of me. All of the, the the angst and the worry and the frustration is off of me when I realize that I don't own a thing. Yeah. When I realize that I don't have a thing that God didn't give me. You know, when you make that statement, people automatically are going to think about tangible things. Um, but what hit me really hard on Sunday, and I'll share again today, is that um, I have adult children now, which is super cool. They're all grown up. And I've always seen them as my own. But they have arrived at a place in life where they have to establish their own personal relationship with the Lord. They have to have their own prayer life, their own study time, their own opportunities of worship. They can't ride the coattails of my prayers anymore, if you Come would on. say. Um, but, honey, pa Bishop. Oh, you can call me honey. <laughs> Come on, they're in their houses with everything. <laughs> Bishop pointed out that although I always thought of them as mine, they were always God's first. Because you don't have a thing that God didn't give you. Yeah. And if you realize that they belong to him, your only job is to steward and manage yes. them the way that the owner says. Yep. And if you do that, you can realize that your whole team is thankful. Number one, my whole team has a relationship with the owner. Let's keep going, Pastor Mika, so they can get back to the sweet potato pie. Romans 12. <laughs> let's start at verse 4 out of Romans 12. For just as we have many members in one body, and all the members do not have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ mm -hmm. and individually members one of another. The reason, another reason my whole team is thankful, number two, is because my whole team appreciates the other players. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. My whole team appreciates the other players. It would be amazing to have a superstar on your team. Definitely. Um, however, even if you don't have a superstar on your team, you have just what you need to win with what you got. I wish you at home could see all of the amazingly awesome people that are putting their hands and gifts to use to create this worship opportunity experience. I am so appreciative of them being willing to take their time and abilities to put into this opportunity for us all to share the Word of God together. That's why the scripture says, just as we have many members in one body, all of us don't have the same function. Right. Somebody right now is controlling the camera so that you can see us clearly. Someone else is controlling the sound so you can see us clearly. Someone else is probably putting lower thirds and QR codes and all kind of stuff on the screen so you can understand what we're doing. And so we appreciate every member of the team. And if you allow every member of the team to be appreciated and play their role, you can win with the team you have. Mm -hmm. I dare you. Come on. Push your, push your neighbors in your house and tell them, my whole team is thankful. And, and if we appreciate them, we can do everything God called us to be. It's so funny. You say at home right now. So the person that's peeling the potatoes and the person that's washing the dishes and the person that's taking care of everybody else, take a moment and just say thank God for them. Come on. Let them know that you are grateful to God, that you have the opportunity to share this moment with them. And when you do that, your whole team will appreciate you and appreciate God. Come on, let's keep going. We got a couple more, and we're going to get you on out of here. First Corinthians um, Let's go 12. Let's start at verse 14, Pastor Mika. For the body is not one member, but many. Mm -hmm. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I am not a part of the body, it is not for this reason any the less a part of the body. And if the ear says, because I am not an eye, I am not a part of the body, it is not for this reason any the less a part of the body. No, it isn't. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? Oh, here it is. Let's get this in your notes. Um, number three, my whole team values their position. Mm -hmm. Let me say that one more time. The reason I know my whole team is thankful, because everyone on my team values their position. 
You know, often people, you know, I'm just, I'm not going to say people, often we get so focused on the role that someone else is playing that we forget to do our part, Pastor mm -hmm. Mika. You know, our team, when I say our team, I mean your family, your business, your ministry. Mm -hmm. Your success or failure is going to be greatly determined by your ability to play your part and everyone else's ability to appreciate their position. Yes. Is that okay? Now, I want to um, add a caveat here because I can sense some people are a little anxious about making this statement because you have been assigned a position that you may feel unqualified to fulfill or you may have some apprehension as to how to move or how to do it. I want to give you some encouragement. God never brings you to a place that he does not plan to equip you to complete the mission, okay? Mm -hmm. The problem is, more often than not, we try to veer away and figure, figure out how to do it on our own. Well, I invite you this evening to seek God for instruction as to how to fulfill your current assignment. You know, um, the best way to find out what you're supposed to be doing on your assignment is ask the owner. Mm -hmm. He's the potter. We are the clay. Let mm -hmm. me help somebody. The clay doesn't get a say in the matter. The clay becomes what the potter asked it to be or, or created it to be as long as the, the clay remains pliable mm -hmm. in the potter's hand. It's funny. I'm, I'm going to tell you something real quick. Um, I was a really, really good football player. I really yes, was a were. good football player. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I had several scholarships all, offers and all of that kind of stuff. And, um, but the most interesting thing is I always wanted to be a quarterback. <laughs> I wanted to play quarterback. Quarterback was the coolest position to me. I had a quarterback voice. Blue 42. Say, huh? I could do it. I could do all of the moves. And, and so I really wanted to be a quarterback, but I lacked the one thing that makes the quarterback the quarterback. Mm -hmm. No, I was good. I could tell people what to do. I had the right kind of voice. I could direct them where to go. I could say, go go on a flare, go on a slant, go on a, 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 a whatever. Um, I could tell them where to go. But my challenge is I couldn't get the ball to him because I can't throw. <laughs> and so it would, be, it would be idiotic, Pastor Mika, for me to be frustrated that I'm not the quarterback when I wasn't designed to be the quarterback. Right. But I was a very good blocker. But the challenge is if I was frustrated that I wasn't the quarterback, I would not block for the quarterback, and he still could not fulfill the purpose for which he had, and our whole team loses. Mm -hmm. You ought to tell everybody in your house, if you play your position, we'll win. If you try to play mine, we'll lose. Mm. But my whole team values their position. So what I heard in my heart just then is some encouragement for the intercessors in the house. Um, the job of an intercessor can be very taxing, but it is so necessary. Tell them what an intercessor is because everybody may not know. Okay. So an intercessor is someone who prays and intercedes. That means stand in the middle, in the gap, for those God assigns to them. And often this is not the sexy position, Okay. Pastor said on Sunday, knees, nobody ever looks at a knee and says, ooh, look at that sexy knee walking by. No. But if you ever try to climb stairs without one, you'll see how valuable they are. Mm -hmm. Intercession is just like that. No one sees you. No one hears you but the Father. But when you don't pray, you can see calamity taking place in the earth. So I want to encourage you, whether it's acknowledged here by man, know that God sees you and that your assignment to your family is invaluable. Don't get weary in your well-doing. Don't faint. There's a great reward for your faithfulness. And my whole team is thankful because whether they call my name or not, if we win, we all get a ring. <laughs> Come on, we got, we got a couple more and we'll get you out here. Psalm 107, let's start at verse 21, Pastor Mika. Okay. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness and for his wonders to the sons of men. Let them also offer sacrifices of thanksgiving. And tell of his works with joyful singing. I think the best part of that said, let them. Yeah. That's because my whole team is thankful because, number four, my whole team knows the fight song. <laughs> let me say that again. My whole team knows the fight song. Let me help you. I don't care who you are. You will arrive at places in your life where your circumstance or your situation may not be ideal. Mm -hmm. It may not be what you want it to be from time to time. Mm -hmm. But I want to encourage somebody tonight. God is good even on a bad day. Yes, he let is. Me, let me go further. God is especially good. His goodness is more apparent on our worst days. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that, that he's given us some, some, some words that we can rehearse as our fight song. Most definitely. Especially when you're heavy. His, mm -hmm. In his word, he says that he's given us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Now, there's a key element in a fight song that I love. Fight songs are like rallies, like, like battle cries. Mm -hmm. When you hear a fight song of your favorite team or even a cadence from a military um, force, they, it's a stirring um, 
of emotion and energy that goes forth. And that's because they're reminding you of what happened before. Right. Um, it's, it's like um, it's like a standard bearer in a, in an yeah. army. Yeah. Um, it your fight song can remind you of when we won before. We might be down right now, but we're not out. And so, even in the kingdom of God, there will be times. The Bible even says a just man falls seven times, mm -hmm. but he gets back up. Yes. The implication is that that I can be down, but I don't have to stay down. Without question. Because if he did it before. God will do it again. There's so many examples in the Bible of people entering his presence through praise and worship and getting the victory. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my favorite, I think, would probably be Paul and Silas. Mm -hmm. Because when they were in prison, they did not look like they would be in a position for a fight song. Mm -hmm. Being beaten and chained in the inner part, portion of the prison does not look like a time and a place for, for a fight song. Mm -hmm. But they decided to praise and pray. Mm -hmm. And in praying and praising, they, everyone's bands were loose. They prayed mm -hmm. and God heard them. Yes, he did. They praised and God showed up. Yeah. Let me say that again. They prayed. How many of y'all know God can hear and answer prayer? When you pray, he hears you. But when you praise and you thank he him, he shows praises. up. And when he shows up, everyone gets free. Hallelujah. My whole team is thankful because we all know the fight song, Oh, magnify the Lord with, with me. me. No, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all yes. that is within me. Bless his holy name. My no. favorite one is when the three Hebrew boys jam. He's able. Mm -hmm. He is well able. I love them. They were getting ready to be thrown in the fiery the furnace, and they told the king, you know, we're not careful in how we respond to you. Whether you throw us in the fire or not, we still know our God is able. That was their fight song. Even in your house, you ought to declare God is able. Yes, no, he is. no. Even if you don't know how to cook that well, <laughs> you're trying. You're trying the macaroni and cheese for the first time. You ought to declare over that cheddar and that gouda, <laughs> God is able. Even if you're making a pumpkin pie instead of a sweet potato pie, it's say okay. God is able <laughs> to take me back to the store and throw that thing away. <laughs> no, but my whole team knows the fight song, and our fight song is this: God, God is. is Able. Come on, we got one more and we're out of here. Psalm 34. Let's start at verse 3, Pastor Mika. Okay. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Mm -hmm. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Okay. The reason my whole team is thankful is because number five, and we're done, my whole team invites others to join. Hallelujah. Let me say that one more time. My whole team invites others to join. Even while we're saying this, you ought to invite somebody else to come to dinner yes. with you tomorrow. It becomes easier to be thankful and to remain in the heart's posture of thanksgiving if you hang around folk who are thankful. Mm -hmm. Let me help you. The unhappy, the consistently unhappy, are usually the consistently unthankful. Uh-huh. But those who are consistently in a posture of happiness, consistently in a posture of good attitudes, are usually people who find things to thank God mm -hmm, for. Mm -hmm. My grandma used to say it like this, when I think mm -hmm. of the goodness of Jesus, of Jesus and all he's already done for me. Hallelujah. He don't have to do another thing. My soul can cry out, hallelujah. hallelujah. Here's the biggest thing we can thank him for. I thank God for saving me. Talk about it, Pastor. So I encourage you to tap in with your neighbors in the house with you and ask them, say, magnify the Lord with me magnify the Lord with me. Now, that sounds like a churchy term, but basically that just says, let's praise and worship God into a space where he is made bigger in our understanding than whatever it is that we're facing. And you just simply do that by giving him glory. All the awesome songs that our praise team just ministered are perfect cadences to set the atmosphere to magnify God. And, and we're going to close right here, and I'm going to just tell you a quick story. Um, there was a father and a son, and the father tells the son, he says, tomorrow I'm going to take you somewhere, a place very special, mm -hmm. and we're going to have a great time. He doesn't tell the son where, we're going, where they're going, but he says, tomorrow I'm going to take you someplace very special, and we're going to have a good time. And so the little boy started thinking, and he started getting excited. And he said, you know what, Dad? I'm going to go ahead and take my bath now. He, when he goes, he takes a shower, he brushes his teeth, he puts on his pajamas because he's getting excited about what is to come. And he says, Daddy, come on in. Come in the, come in the room. Tuck me in. Tuck me in. And, um, and his dad was like, you're going to bed early. He said, I'm excited. I'm excited. Just tuck me in. So he, he tucks him in, and he says, Daddy, before, you go, before I go, let me hug you. And he says, Daddy, thank, thank you, you for tomorrow. He said, son, I haven't told you where we're going. He said, but daddy, you know what I like, so thank you for tomorrow. 
He said, well, I haven't told you what, what we're going to eat when we get there. He said, Daddy, but I know you're going to feed me, so thank you for tomorrow. He said, you don't know how far the place is that we're going. He says, no, I don't know how far we're going, but I know you're going to be with me all the way. So thank you in advance mm -hmm. for tomorrow. Your whole team is thankful when they realize you don't know what the future holds, but you know who holds the future. Thank you, Lord. And I want you to do something special tonight. I want you to thank God in advance, not for the turkey, not for the ham, not for all the fixings and all the sides and the desserts. Thank him that tomorrow he's already there waiting for Hallelujah. you to prepare a table before you, to give you brand new mercies every day. And when you get to tomorrow, you can say, this is the day the Lord has made. Hallelujah. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for tomorrow. Pastor Mick is going to close us out in prayer. Mm -hmm. um, give him an opportunity to meet Jesus, and, and then yes. we can close on out. From the comfort of your home, if you do not know the Lord as your personal Savior, I want to just take a moment to lead you through a prayer, if you will. Just repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you for forgiving me of all of my sins. I choose in this moment to make you my Lord and my Savior. Father, I thank you for providing a way for me to be in relationship with you. If you've just shared that prayer with me, then you've given your life to the Lord, and I encourage you to receive him in your heart. How do you do that? By jumping into the word of God. Take a look at Ephesians or Romans and get to know him better through his word. I also encourage you to continue and begin to pray. That is simply a conversation with the Lord. It doesn't have to be filled with these thuses and thous. He wants you to talk to him like your friend. And then lastly, I encourage you to get into a Bible teaching fellowship where you can grow in the things of the Lord, the knowledge of the Lord, your faith can be increased, and your relationship can be strengthened. Listen, um, I know you've been enjoying this word. We want to give you an opportunity to sow. Listen, um, anytime the seed of the word is sown, you ought to seal it with the seed yourself. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to put up all the ways to give on the screen. Um, here's a real simple way you can text to give tonight. Text the word SEED to 55498. Mm -hmm. Just text the word SEED to 55498. Or here's another simple way. They can give through the Givelify app. Yes. On the Givelify app, we're New Church of Faith, Orlando, Florida. You can go right to the Givelify app. We're New Church of Faith, Orlando, Florida. Okay, let's do our financial <laughs> faith confession together. Father, I know that you have a financial plan for the believer called tithes and offerings. At this moment, I set my heart to tap into your financial plan for me. Satan will not rob me anymore of my finances. In the name of Jesus, by faith, I am at this moment planting my financial seed into the kingdom of God's field. I am doing this because I know that it is a biblical truth that in return for my financial faithfulness, you are supplying all my needs and above my needs. In Jesus' name, by faith, I hold fast in my confession in your financial plan. Amen. Amen. So for the upcoming events and announcements, you know the New Church of Faith is a very active and alive ministry. So I'd just like to share a couple of announcements for you. The first of which is that we will have our regular Saturday morning prayer, which we have every Saturday morning at 6 a.m. right here on our campus. In addition to that, we will begin the month of December, concluding the year with the first seven days of prayer, which will begin Sunday morning, the first, at 6 a.m. in the in our main sanctuary, and we'll run through the 7th of December. So we encourage you to come out and pray with us. Begin your day with an hour of power and prayer. If you're not able to be with us in the sanctuary, we encourage you to join us through our online campus, either on YouTube or Instagram. In addition to that, we will have our New Year's Eve lock-in. Our teen ministry is hosting their annual lock-in. This year's theme is Battleground. I encourage you to go to the website to make sure that your young people can be registered because it's going to be an awesome time of fellowship. Also, couples, the Mistletoe Jam is back. We are having our second installment of the Mistletoe Jam. It's a cute, fun date night for you and your significant other. This is for dating, engaged, and married couples to come out and enjoy an awesome evening of music and fun and games. So that's going to be held on the 22nd at 6 p.m. right here on our campus. There should be a QR code for you to be able to register and sign up for that. And then also, ladies, the Better Conference registration is open. 
Better 2025 registration is open and you do not want to miss it. This is going to be an awesome time, not only of fun and fellowship, but some word that is going to take all of your spiritual giftings and abilities to a whole nother level. You do not want to miss that opportunity of fellowship. Last year's conference was good, but this year it's going to be even better. <laughs> So those are the announcements that I'll share with you today. But I encourage you to keep your eyes and ears open for what the New Church of Faith has going on. We invite you to tune in to watch us Monday through Friday at 11 p.m. on Super Channel and also on all of our platforms for all of our regularly scheduled services. Come on, I think we got another one. We want to do one more? Come on. Let's give God some praise. All of your problems, all of your pain, even your troubles, you can give it to Jesus. All of your burdens, all of your cares, even your struggles, you can give it to Jesus.
I dare you to give God praise tonight. Give God worship tonight. I don't care what you're going through, what the circumstance, what the situation. God said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. So you're going to make it through. You're going to make it over. As a matter of fact, you're already on your way out. I'm telling you, you can give God praise in advance. Praise him while the wall's still up. Praise him while the report is still not favorable. But we have a saying here, whose report will you believe? And the answer is always, I will believe the report of the Lord. Say, I'm going to make it. Say, I'm going to make it. Because I'm going to make it through. Make that declaration. I'm going to make it through. Because my house is built on it. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus.